Hey guys, Joshua with Epic Channel, and today we're going to be working on a 3116. What are we doing to it? Well, we're going to do a set of injectors in the rack, and also something I've got lots of questions on, which is doing the rack sink and the rack adjustment. Before I say that I'm an expert on the subject, I'm not. I've done probably between 5 and 10 rack adjustments on 3116s, which does not make me an expert. However, not a lot of people know how to do them correctly. Now, we do have a problem. We don't have the tooling. i got to find it. It's not here. I think one of the field mechanics has it. So we got an interesting sunrise thing going on here. Looks like rain to me. But anyway, I'll show you what I'm working on. Let's go see what we're doing. So this is what we're working on. It's called a Spread King, and I thought about a thousand jokes I could say about that, but don't want to get in trouble, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Now, this is some sort of aggregate spreader for doing asphalt and paving, and it's got a 3116 in it, which is a mechanical 7.2 liter cap diesel engine, and it's pretty good access. You can see the sides here, pretty good, easy to get to. There's no panels to remove to get to either side, but mostly what we're going to be doing is working on top. And we've got six reman injectors here already. And that's our engine. And I found this picture and I thought it was pretty funny. It says lunches and trash only. I don't know why you'd be mixing those two things, but regardless, this is the engine we're working on. So I'd already replaced the rack and the old one wasn't in horrible shape, but since we were doing this repair, we decided to do a full set of injectors on the rack at the same time, which is not a horrible idea. And here are the instructions for doing the injectors. And one thing to know is do not use the small O-ring on the injector tip. That's in many of the installation procedures and they're gonna to torque to about 10 foot pounds. Now what's weird is the injectors I pulled out had them. And yes, there are 12 pages for the installation and I had four different boxes of tooling that I ended up using and you'll see why. So the injector on the right is the old one and it's CAT injector single o-ring up there but it actually had the lower o-ring there now remember it said do not use them and that's what's weird about 3116s i've always gotten them in the past and wondered why sometimes they don't use the o-ring sometimes you do see them with them and the new ones did not come with the o-rings as you can see they only had the upper o-ring and it was already installed but from most of the literature i could read it seems like if you use the o-ring it could cause it to be under torqued and maybe fail early and then get combustion gases into your fuel rail. So one thing to do is go by what Cat tells you. And this one actually has, well, all the 3116s do. Cat calls them brass cups. Now it looks more like copper to me. In some places it says copper, but most of the literature calls it brass. Now, I would say, like I said, that looks a lot more like copper than brass, but whatever. So the bad thing with these copper or brass cups is you have to ream them, or it says to ream them, in order to install the injectors. Now the way we're looking here, your number one injector would be on the left, or the bore for it, and all the way on the right here is number six. You can see number six has already been installed. And this is a, an injector, this is not the reamer, this is actually the injector tip bore cleaner. Now there's a lot of specialty tool to do this correctly, that's why I'm making this video is to show you the specialty tooling required in order to do it correctly. Now, like I said, I haven't done a billion of these like John Goldsmith probably has, but done enough that we'll just say I know more about 3116s than the average human on the planet. So, like I said, you're going to clean out that tip and it's exposed to a lot of carbon buildup because it is below the ceiling portion of the injector, so it's exposed to the combustion process. Now... One annoying thing here, and if you just listen. The shop has been super noisy this last week. Uh, someone who will remain nameless has been working on track frames and using their air hammer and the press and every large hammer and noise making device on the planet for the last week, so. Even though I'm not going to name him here, obviously, uh, I'd just like to say thank you for that. Really appreciate that. And we're going to be getting back to installing our injector here. We didn't stop. We just kind of are making fun of one of our coworkers here. In jest, folks, he watches the videos. Not sure why. But this is our reamer. Now, if you look, it's all messed up. It looks like someone has been hitting it with a hammer or was using it as a punch. And this is really frustrating, folks, because shop tooling in general is almost always a, 
abused, and it really makes me mad. But these are little shims. Now, these shims are very important because they ride against that section that's all messed up because some Neanderthal thought this was a hammer. And basically, they determine how much of the cup is cut. So the more shims, the less is cut. And you'll see why that is in a second. So I've coated the end of the reamer with red grease. And the reason I've done that is because as you cut the cup, which is brass slash copper, where do you think that metal's gonna go if you didn't put that grease on there? Well, most of it's gonna go in the cylinder. And if you know anything about engines, you probably want less free floating metal just in the cylinder. So I found, and you know, a lot of these tips were taught to me by older mechanics, so I'm kind of teaching them to you, but if you put grease on the end there, it'll catch the majority of them. And of course, this not being steel or iron that you're shaving off here, you can't use a magnet to get them. So if they do fall in the cylinder, they're gonna stay there. So what we did there with all the shims on was do what I call as a test cut, and usually it doesn't even touch the cup with all four shims on. As you can see, there's really no copper shavings on the grease, which means, yeah, it didn't really shave much off. So what I like to do, although I'm not sure if this is the right way to do it, but I always go shim by shim. So we had four, now we're gonna have three shims, and with three shims, hopefully we'll cut a little bit. Now, it didn't look like these had ever been shaved before, so if we're shaving a little bit off, and the reason you're doing this is because the injector, since it doesn't have a bottom seal, is going to face seal into the copper sleeve. So that's why you have to ream them because if there's a ridge or pitting, it's not gonna seal right and then you're gonna get combustion gases in your fuel rail, which as you can imagine is a problem. Now you might be saying that everything seems to be going okay, Josh. Why did you name this technically a headache? Well, folks, this is gonna be a two part video series and I'm gonna be showing you how to do the rack in the next part of the video. But as you can see there, we got a little copper shaved off. We do not have the assembled correct tooling, at least not the ones I'm used to using for doing the rack adjustment. So that's why this video series is gonna be technically a headache. Now, you can see a little bit of the bright spot there. That is where it's shaved off. And hopefully that is where the injector is going to sit. Not much you can do if it's not. So what we've got here is two shims. So like I said, the smaller the amount of shims, the deeper it will cut. Would you want to start off with, say, two? Well, no, because what if you only needed, what if you needed all four? You want to shave as little as possible because if you get down to where there's no shims and you don't shave it all on the cup, that basically means that the injectors are probably not going to seat against the cup then and they're not going to seal, so you're probably going to have to replace your cups and that's not something you want to do, let me tell you, unless you have to. Now, this reaming process is a pain and there is a lot of specialty tooling, but if you're going into a 3116 thinking you can just do it without the proper tooling, you're gonna have a really hard time. Now, you know what? I've never tried just putting the injectors in, torquing the bolt, using the bottom seal, not running the uh, rack adjustment or the overhead. Maybe, I'm sure people have tried that and maybe with some success, but in general, I always go by the cat recommendations. Obviously, I work for a cat dealer, Western States Cat, if you are unfamiliar, and that's where this repair was being done. So, did it shave it off? Well, yes, it did. You can see there's a pretty uniform, bright cut there. Now, the reamer does not destroy the cup. It is reaming it, but it's a little choppy. It's not as smooth as I'd like, probably because of the shim area being damaged. Something that is destroyed though is this Gas 3500 series from Mace in Poland. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. And he set these in and said, I've never seen a piston destroyed like this. And to tell you the truth, I haven't either. It's completely melted a hole through the side of the skirt here. I'm not sure. Obviously, this is a fuel burn situation, but man, those are cool pictures. Thanks for sending them. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled repair here. So... We have reamed it. We are ready for injector installation now. And what I was doing there is just rinsing off any excess grease and there might be some small shavings of copper, but fortunately, like I said, copper is not magnetic. So if it is in there, there's not much you can do. Best you can do is flush it into the cylinder 
and then use some sort of vacuum, which I'm using here. This is my little brake bleeder that I use for cleaning out cylinders and various other things like vacuum priming fuel systems. And we're gonna be doing the rest of the uh, injector installation here. Now you can see what looks to be like little rocker arms there next to the push rods. Those, that is your rack if you're not familiar with it. And that's what we'll be adjusting in the next video on how to properly do that is extremely difficult to do if you haven't done it before. And it's quite difficult if you don't have the right tooling. So we've got our reman injector here and it's gonna lubricate the O-ring. There's only one O-ring on these, unlike most injectors, which have three. Now to install them in the injector board is quite easy. Now this armature here is what the scroll goes to, which is what tells the injector how much fuel to spray and that connects to your rack. There's actually, can't see it, but there's a small ball on the bottom of the rack. And what you do is you push your injector in after you lubricate it. And then you really just push it in until you feel it kind of pop, which means the O-ring is installed. There you go. Then you just rotate it so that that armature, that little C shape, is over the ball. So as the rack moves, which will make more sense in the next video where I'll show you how to do the rack adjustment, it is moving each injector to tell it how much fuel or how little fuel or to shut off. Now that's where it gets complicated because they all have to move in unison. Now use an inject new injector hold down bolt here and these torque to nine plus or minus two foot pounds, although one of it said 106 inch pounds. I'm doing 10 foot pounds because nine plus or minus two. So with that set, you're gonna torque it. Now usually on an injector, you'd be done as far as installing it in the bore. But not on a 3116. Oh no, we got more specialty tool. You need to use what they call a forcing tool. And the first part of that is this sleeve that goes over the injector spring. Now that injector spring hold down tool is because you're gonna force the body of the injector and the bottom section where the sleeve is, or the copper cup, into the face of the injector to seal it because we don't have an O-ring on the bottom of the injector. So use this forcing tool I was saying, man, there's a lot of specialty things in the injector. You are correct. It is super technical. And once you've got that in, then you're going to torque what they call the forcing bolt or forcing screw or seating bolt. But basically, once this tool's on there, you're gonna torque it to 25 foot pounds. Then you're supposed to wait five seconds. Torque it again. Now the injector's actually seated. So that basically forces it into the cup there. So now what you can do is take the this apparatus off. Then you can take your little, uh, you take three mounting bolts off. So to install this, you also obviously have to have the rockers off, but you also need to take those bolts holding the valve cover base off on the side there so that bolt can go in. Take off your cover. Then you're gonna torque your bolt again. And that one torques to 10 foot-pounds again, folks. So that is how you install the injector, ream the cup, do the forcing procedure for the injector. And that is pretty much it for this video. The next video is going to be the one where it's a lot more headache and less installation. That's going to be our sync video. Thanks for watching.